questions. Uh, we just have to take the 9, 10 calls. Uh, Mitesh, what would you, uh, what would your call be? Uh, I would choose a buy on Bata uh, here. Uh, keep a stop at about 14.54, look for targets of 15.10. Prakash, Prakash, what about you? I think I'll go with Indusind Bank. Possibly we'll see an up move to around 14.75 zones. Stop below 14.20 should be okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, gentlemen, we'll come back to you with more questions. Uh, Uden, uh, what's your sense about, uh, you know, where the, uh, you know, buy, you spoke about autos as a viable area. Where else do you think the price damage and the uh, way in which the sector has shaped up merits buying? Would it be like corporate banks? Would it be uh, FMCG? You know, Lata, the way things are right now, I think it's, you know, we should not jump to the conclusion that things will get better in four or five months. And that's the quandary for investors right now. It's easy to say, go out and buy stocks which have corrected so much, and therefore, this is a great time to be value buying uh, in many of these clusters. The point is, we don't know where the world will be six or nine months from now. Things are not looking good at this point in time. You can go out on a limb and buy some of these stocks and what if four months down the line you realize that actually it's a much bigger crisis you know the bond market in the u.s or the bond market in in the western world actually will give you sleepless nights if you look at it closely enough and therefore to conclude that there will be no crisis this time it will be a routine slowdown after which inevitably markets and economies will recover after such a protracted bull run i think is probably jumping the gun a little bit and therefore, that is the reason why this cluster of 12 or 15 stocks are not cor correcting yet or meaningfully yet because people are still saying that if this is going to be a, a crisis, then we are still better off not taking those value calls and hiding in these very good companies which have told us time and again in the past that they are the best ones to avoid very significant drawdowns in the event of a crisis which we cannot conclude will not, will not happen this time round. So it's tempting to look at some of these beaten down valuations, but I still don't, I don't think one should have the confidence to say that we should buy these now because the turnaround is just around the corner. If it is, we'll all be celebrating at the end of this year. But what if it is not? What if this turns out to be, and every crisis is different, so we should not make comparisons. What if it is like a 2007, eight kind of, a 2008 kind of crisis? We don't know, it will not happen. And therefore, I think better sense lies in also thinking about capital preservation rather than how much delta you will create by buying beaten down stocks. Take your point. Uh, I mean, I, I would still think a 2008 crisis for us will not be bad because that was not a homegrown crisis. That was a global crisis and we could still perhaps swim ashore. If it is a 97 kind of slowdown, it is much more protracted because that was, what, six years? Uh, it was only in uh, latter half of 2003 that we started seeing growth. Uh, but we are coming back uh, to you with those questions. Uh, for the moment, the markets have opened in the green, so let's talk about things positive. Uh, it's about a third of a percent higher on the Sensex and the Nifty. In fact, on Nifty, it's almost half a percent higher. And uh, the Nifty Bank and uh, uh, mid-caps are also as good, about a third of a percent higher. Leading the rally are the pharma stocks, actually. So Sun Pharma, it's just got a tie-up with a Chinese company and will be able to sell its products there. So that's about 1.7 up. Titan is following short covering in that stock. Uh, management commentary was very negative, but there's a bit of short covering. India Bulls Housing also is seeing a bit of covering. It saw a lot of knock uh, last week, and that's up about 2.2, 2.4. UPL 1.3 up, uh, JSW Steel, DRL, SIPLA and Bajaj Finserv uh, uh, and yeah, I should also perhaps getting there about 1% higher on all these stocks. Uh, between 1 and half a percent higher are Axis, Tech Mahindra's, Ultratech, Yes Bank, uh, uh, Hero Moto, Bharti Infratel uh, and such other stocks. Now I think Sun is putting on more weight, India Bulls is putting on more weight, it's about 3.5 up. Uh, there are, it's a very short red list, uh, Power Grid, Z, Asian Paints and m and uh, They're just about half to 1% in the red. Okay, well, uh, it's actually a good opening for the uh, broader markets. Uh, the mid-cap index is up half a percent. The advanced decline ratio is positive at 2 to 1 in favour of the advances. A lot of stocks in the FMCG space are hitting 52-week highs. So, Pidilite is one stock, it's at a fresh 52-week high right now. 
some of these um, you know life insurance companies hdfc life sbi life are at fresh 52 week highs so uh, do keep an eye out on that apart from that interglobe aviation is having a big move on the upside so up almost about 3 or percent in fact um, this month has been pretty good the year has been pretty good for interglobe up about 41% Uh, a couple of other stocks, NBFCs are bouncing back. India Bulls Housing Finance is up about two and a half percent. Some real estate stocks are doing pretty well. Shiram Transport is up about one and a half percent, and FMCG names uh, Titan you spoke about up about one and a half percent or so. Some more uh, stocks to look at. Info Edge is under a slight bit of pressure because of you know a lot of restaurants logging out of Zomato. Um, so Info Edge down about half a percent or so. Coffee Day has also been in the news. Uh, they did say that you know they will be looking to reduce their group debt by 2,400 crores. Uh, so they gave an update on how they plan to do deleveraging, and the stock is up almost four percent. Uji One uh, is under a bit of pressure right now on the back of that holding company discount, so down about four odd percent. Uh, and DHFL is actually rallying on the back of the news that we spoke about earlier. But apart from that, it's a good opening for the market, Lata. Uh, the Nifty now holding on to 11. Thousand one hundred, so it's straight away a gain of about sixty odd points. Okay, uh, well there it is. Uh, it's almost three to one if you looked at the BSE advanced declines. So quite positive. Uh, Prakash, uh, anything fresh now for a trading uh, strategy? Yes, uh, the market looks okay and looks like it should close in the green today. And I like uh, stocks. Lupid seems to be a good stock to buy now. Stop somewhere below the levels of 726, 727, and possibly we'll see an up move around 750 zones. Okay, uh, Mitesh, any nifty strategy now? Are you more confident <coughs> going long there and uh, uh, stocks? Not the bank nifty. Clearly, I think today bank nifty and in the intraday charts is showing good traction. Uh, keep a stop below 28 to 30 or thereabouts, which is roughly about 165 points away. And I think 28,950, uh, 970 zones, just around 29,000 could be visited over the next few days. So I would be uh, betting big on banks and uh, bank nifty and a couple of banking names like Excess Bank, etc., which are also showing good char uh, good chart patterns on the intraday basis. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much for staying with us through the pre-market and the uh, first few uh, market trades as well. We'll touch base with you at ten. Uh, then, you know, given the mix of global backdrop and our own uh, slowdown, which is getting worse by the day, do you think it's uh, uh, not wise for an investor to even buy now at all? I mean, are, are you expecting ten thousand eight hundred to hold? Uh, does it get much worse than that? I mean, that's primarily the first question. Uh, that uh, I asked you, how much worse can it get? You know, it's a nice Monday morning. Why talk about doomsday scenarios at the start of the week? So, uh, you know, it's not been a very pronounced correction for large caps, Lata, and we know that. I mean, you can say that it's 15, 20 stocks which are holding up the market. Mid caps have fallen more. Broader market decimation has been more significant. All of that is true. But you know the index is still the index, uh, and those 50 stocks make up very large part of India's market cap. Uh, and as I said before, what if four months down the line, you markets get the feeling that moves of the government are not actually helping in resolving the situation quite as quickly as we think it can, and the rural slowdown is not getting better, nor is the global backdrop. In that case. Will some of these multiples of some of the stocks which are holding the index at 11,000 hold up, or could they give up 10% of their uh, P multiples very quickly? I think that risk is very much there, and that could take us down to those 10,000 kind of levels on the Nifty. I think, given where what we are staring at in terms of the backdrop, uh, which is global plus local. I mean, a Nifty level of 10,000 should not surprise anybody. Now, will it happen or not? Depends on a whole host of factors, but I think that threat of that happening, a 10,000 print on the Nifty, is very, very uh, real. Over, I'm not saying it will happen next month, but it certainly could happen uh, during the remainder of the year. So there is still a lot of price damage which might happen, and um, investors should be wary of that risk. The only thing which is holding the market at 11,000 is the belief that the government can do something to change the course. Of this economic discourse. Mm. Now we'll know in the next few weeks as these pronouncements roll in whether this can happen or not. But I think it's a difficult kind of a mix, even for the government, to try and do something to pull us out. 
I just had one more question before we let you go, Odian. Even if someone wants to invest at these levels, um, is it a good idea to invest in some of these companies that have delivered good earnings this quarter? So, you know, whether it's an Asian Paints, whether it's a Dabur, of course, management commentary has been on the cautious side. But uh, uh, some of these companies, say like a Marico, is even talking about a 10 to 15 percent growth going ahead. Uh, so, is this a good space to invest if one wants to? It's not just the good. In my book, it's the only space to invest in right now, Bar Sonia. The companies that you mentioned, it's not, you know, this is the point which I've been trying to make over the last 15, 20 minutes, is that so much about what you read in terms of investing is about predicting the future, what will happen, what will be EPS. And we know over the last five or six years how wrong analysts and market experts can be in predicting anything about the future, whether it's earnings, whether it's stock prices, target prices, ROEs, everything has gone wrong. We have significantly underperformed every expectation of the market. And therefore, I would say in a time of crisis like this, look at the past, don't look at the future. The future we have no clue about, especially on at a time like this. But if we look at the past, look at the 10 year, past 10 year track record. And from the time that Lata was mentioning, 1997, all the way through the two major local and global crises of early or late 1990s and 2008-9, mm. you look at some of these companies that you just mentioned, which are the ones which have actually tidied over this crisis with the minimum drawdowns? You will find the same list of companies, very little variation in those <coughs> names. The same Nestle, Marico, Asian Paint, HDFC Bank, and it's boring, but you, it's boring is great in <laughs> times of such uncertainty like this. Mm -hmm. And I would say, forget all those things. You can add a corporate bank here, an insurance company there. That's fine. But stick to the bluest of blue chips and look at the past, don't look at the future. I think you've given a very helpful list. Uh, Udair Mukherjee, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. <clears throat> well, uh, the markets actually today are holding up. As Udair said, it's a bright Monday morning. So uh, at the moment, at least two-thirds of a percentage point higher on the Sensex and Nifty. And that's not even the